Hello again, everybody. Northy is here for the round 10 team coach recap. This is something that I'm going to be doing alongside the uh, round 10 preview or every new rounds preview uh, on this channel. Basically, what I'm going to be doing here is going through how I went for round 10. Uh, I'm not going to go into any explanation as to what my teams are going to be for the next round, uh, although I am excited for round 11. A lot of really exciting matchups, including the Western Bulldogs and Melbourne. Probably, the, probably the, one of the biggest games this year, I would probably guess. Uh, but a lot of exciting things coming uh, very, very soon from the round 11 action. However, what I will show you now is how we went in terms of tips, in terms of top team, and in terms of star powers. Now, star powers, this is not what my team was, and I'm still changing it up a little bit here and there. However, we go over to the ladder. We came 64 out of uh, uh, who knows how many people, but we're slowly climbing up in the season rankings as well. And overall, we could have done better, but I think we did all right. We needed a good 50-ish, maybe a little bit less than 50 to get to the 21st position. To get to 20th, we would have needed about 51 extra points, and there were places we could have gotten them from. Uh, I originally had a green to star powers Jack Zebel in here, and although he did have a lot of possessions and a lot of marks, which helped him out really, really well, Clayton Oliver had probably the best game of his, of his career, so I've chucked him in. Hopefully, he can keep his form. I'm thankful that I have a green version of him, uh, and we've also got Brody Grundy in there again because I did have Paddy Cripps, and he did play a really good game. However, Brody Grundy, after a poor last week, I decided to take him out, and yeah, he all of a sudden decided to absolutely smash it, although they didn't come away with a win. Ended up coming uh, coming up short with a one-point loss to Port Adelaide. A great effort, and Brody Grundy put in some work. I've so 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 far since then, I've been trying to match, mix and match, see who worked for next week. This legend position and rising position have definitely been the two most difficult for me to work out because there isn't too many people I've been too excited to use. However, Joel Selwood looks like he'll take my spot. Uh, if I change my mind, maybe uh, we'll do something differently. However. This is what I'm thinking about. We'll see whether there's any changes towards the end of the week. But that's my star powers. As I said, 64th, I would have liked to get into the top 50. However, there were just some things that really got unlucky for me this week, including my top 18. I'll quickly show you that. I want to show you that because this was really close to going well. We had a 22nd position. We came 22nd after a 7th place finish last week. I'm not terribly disappointed because we did actually end up getting more points. However, last week must have just been a one-off week because this one just blew me out of the water. A few bad luck uh, picks going as well. Mitch Duncan I originally had in uh, for Tom Mitchell. I think I put Jared Lyons in and swapped Mitchell out. Lions had a great game, but Mitchell had a 44 possession performance. I just didn't expect him to pull something like that out of there, purely because Hawthorne has been really struggling. And Tom Mitchell didn't put on the greatest performance. He put on a decent performance. I, can't, I don't think I can say he put on a bad performance because he doesn't really put on too many bad performances. But 44 possessions, uh, a lot of marks I, and tackles, I believe, just all over the place, and I would have really liked that. And Mitch Duncan... He got, knocked, he got knocked out uh, on a big tackle um, from one of the Gold Coast players. And so now he's concussed and out for however long he's needed to be uh, with the concussion rules. He is going to be out for next week, so I won't have him. So that opens up a spot for Tom Mitchell. Uh, Cam Guthrie played alright as well, but got himself injured as well. Uh, but these three were beautiful for me. I'm going to keep him in for the next round. Clayton Oliver with, a, uh, I think, the AFL fantasy points. Yeah, 155. Three gold. Massive amount of disposals. High 30s, I believe. Lots of kicks. Lots of tackles. Lots of marks. He was all over the place. By far, I think, one of his best games of his, of his career, as I said previously. But thankfully, I did have Brody Grundy in this lineup, so I got his points. Um, and Jack McRae has just been doing Jack McRae things in that Saints uh, victory when they beat them by 111 points. Just any Bulldogs player I had was super helpful. Uh, we got a backline. The backline was really, really good for me. I think the only one that let me down was Jaden Short. He just disappeared off the face of the earth in the second half. So I've 
switched them out. Everyone else did pretty all right. Uh, nothing really, you know, disappointed me too much in the back line. Just that one uh, Jaden Short. So I've swapped him out just for the moment. And Dyson Heppel seems to be playing a little bit more consistently well. And they rely on him just a little bit more. As you can see, 88 game points last round was pretty decent. And he's high up there in the season averages. So I've swapped him out. We've got Jack Crisp. He did awesome. He did really, really well. Another good Magpies player. Uh, Jake Lloyd did... Uh, uh, Jake Lloyd and Callum Mills, both for Sydney, played some really good defense. Obviously, it was a back-and-forth game against Fremantle. So everyone was kind of getting involved. Uh, Lucky Whitfield looked a bit slow, but eventually kicked a goal. Got himself really into the game. A few late marks. Added some extra points onto him. He became really helpful as well. I'm glad I picked him up for the week. Forward line is a whole different story, though. I had Harry McKay in. He kicked two goals, but man, was he disappointing. It was very, very disappointing. Um, I would have expected him to get more involved. I had Jack, Jack Darling in as well. He had a really rough week. And although he did kick five goals in a quarter the week before, I don't know whether he'll bring it out the next week. I really don't know. I don't like playing forwards, like big forwards. In my forward line, I try and look for people who can probably move a lot more. And these full forwards always kind of, you know, stress me out. However, sometimes they play well and you've got to just pick them out at the right time. Marcus Bontempelli, he is not leaving anytime soon for me. Another amazing game from him. Just all the, like I said, all the Bulldogs all around. Amazing work. Jack Zebel actually had a pretty decent game for me. He ended up uh, doing the 24 disposals and lots of marks, like I said, in the star powers. So I'm going to keep him around. These three, I'm not too sure about. Pretty much these four, I'm not too sure about. Heaney did play all right. Didn't have a standout, but you can afford to have some air performances every now and then, um, especially in this one. Uh, I'd like to see them all have amazing games, but sometimes you can't win them all. Uh, but we go here. Eric Hipwood, um, I believe he's a bit more consistent in terms of uh, points that he gets in uh, instead of Harry McKay. If we go down here, Eric Hipwood. Uh, if we, do we see any cards? No, Harry McKay's right there. And uh, Eric Hipwood's only got the 54. But as you can see, 80 points last round, really got involved. I'm going to test him out. I'm hoping we see a big game from him in terms of uh, next week. I can't remember who they're playing. We'll find out in the tips again. But I'm hoping Eric Hipwood will continue his uh, strong performance. And Jack Billings, there are not many Saints you could really say were too great in that last round. So Jack Billings, I'm going to keep there because he did end up getting a lot of the ball, a couple marks, a mark almost right on the full-time siren. So that was a cheeky couple of points there. But, um, yeah, hopefully Jack Billings will be able to put on a big performance in the next round. So that's my top 18. Like I said, 22nd. They, like, top, top team is my best game by far. However, I'd like to see things get a little bit better towards the end of the season. Now we go to top four. And wow, was this a disappointing one. This team was not what I had. The only change I had was we go right here and I had Todd Goldstein. Wow, was that a bad decision. I don't know why I put any faith in North Melbourne players to do anything great. But uh, yeah, Todd Goldstein had a really, really bad performance in terms of what he's, or what I expected from him. I thought maybe he'd come out and do well, but only 18 hitouts. Just a really poor performance from him. I'm going to put Brody Grundy back in. And quite honestly, if I had kept him in, maybe we would have seen a better result. Because we came 431st. That is really poor. Really, really poor. And as you can see, there's not much room to mess up in a um, top four situation. And yeah, I had 358 game points. And that just shot me straight down. All the way down. you got to find the best lineup. And the people who maybe had the best ones are kicking themselves, laughing at people like me, putting all those crap players in. But we go over to the home. You can see the top four. If you had this lineup, you did very, very well. I could have had Jack McRae. I could have had Brody Grundy. Didn't, I really did not expect Mark Blitzars to be that good. But Lance Franklin with a six-goal performance. Some of them may have expected that and chucked him in. But if you had this lineup, congratulations. You are a winner. But if you had similar players like this, Yep, you are doing just as well. But the big difference for me, Brody Grundy should have been him instead of Todd Goldstein. A little bit disappointing, but other four, I'm not mad at whatsoever. Marcus, of course, had a good game. Jared is consistently doing really well. And Rory led a bit of a quiet one from what, he's, what I'm used to from him, but I'm more than certain he can bounce back. He's been playing very well this season. Like I said, a worst one. But uh, we go over to tips. Uh, I've already done mine for round 11. Brisbane was playing GWS. Okay, so Jared Lyons should be able to do some more things in there. GWS has played 
been playing really, really well as a late, so they may be able to stop it from constantly being bombed into the Brisbane forward line. But Brisbane is strong. Brisbane know what they're doing. It's going to be a very fun game. It's going to be a very, very exciting one. GWS after their big win against West Coast. Um, I have also tipped in terms of West Coast, I picked them over Essendon. Now, I am understanding that they're coming off a loss, Essendon are coming off a win, could be certain morales, but Essendon came off a really convincing win to North Melbourne, and I'm truly expecting Essendon to not expect the level of skill that West Coast will have compared to a North Melbourne squad. Just, I think the levels are going to be a lot different because Essendon could run right over the top of North Melbourne. They were just leaving them open for easy runs all game. So I'm hoping West Coast will be able to shut that down straight away. Uh, I'm going to go Geelong over Collingwood. Collingwood did actually put in a really good performance against Port Adelaide. However, I am still confident that Geelong on their little streak of uh, work right now. I think Geelong will pull it out. Uh, I'd love to be able to tip my team, but I just don't see it happening, even after the 111-point loss. The Saints are going to come out hungry. North may be hungry as well, but, I mean, I think there's just more talent. North Melbourne, uh, probably off another loss, maybe feeling a little deflated. Who knows, they may have a bit more fight in them now with their win against Hawthorne. I'm picking Gold Coast over Hawks. However, I was very tempted to pick the Hawks because Gold Coast have a way of disappointing you. They really do. So uh, I uh, was kind of hesitant picking Gold Coast, but I'm confident they'll pull it out. Uh, Carlton versus Sydney. Carlton, I just haven't seen any defying wins. Like, they've had their expected wins. They beat Hawks last week by a solid 23, I believe it was. So that's decent, but... I still see Sydney winning over Carlton. It was a hard-fought game against the, against the Dockers, and they're wanna, gonna wanna come out strong against Carlton. Very, very strong. But we go over here to Port Adelaide versus Fremantle. I am picking Fremantle for this one. I think they may be able to do something here with this little stretch of winning. Uh, Sydney, obviously, that was a big win against them. They're gonna try and do more of that, step it up, and Port Adelaide's kind of shock against Collingwood. Uh, only winning by a point. I think that may have some kind of effect in this game against Fremantle. Who knows? I may be completely wrong. However, if this is the marquee matchup. Oh, I forgot to talk about Richmond Adelaide. This is an upset pick as well that I've decided to use. Adelaide, I think, are going to beat Richmond. Um, I could easily see it going the other way. However, I believe that Adelaide's performance against, uh, what you call it, Melbourne, may actually be a little bit more of a uh, trend rather than a fluke. So I hope to see Adelaide take it over Richmond as they are now out of the top eight, which is hard to believe right now. But the big blockbuster matchup, the Dogs versus the Ds, this one is going to be very, very exciting to watch. Uh, yeah, Western Bulldogs, I'm going to tip them. They are just one of the best teams I think I've ever seen over the last 10 years. Obviously, you got your dynasty teams, Geelong, you got, uh, what you got, Hawthorne from back in the early 2010s and the late 2000s, and then we got the Richmond team that's been coming through. A lot of really awesome teams. But this Western Bulldogs team is really opening my eyes to something. I've never seen a team so dominant all over the field. Their forwards feel strong. Their midfield feels stacked. Their backline is a little bit lackluster right now, but when fully healthy, also really, really good. So I'm expecting the Dogs to de defeat the Ds, especially because the Ds have had a lot of shaky, shaky wins. Uh, they beat North Melbourne after a really tough first half. But uh, yeah, the Dogs, are gonna, I think, are going to take it over Melbourne. Give them a real shock is what I'm expecting. However, if they prove me wrong, congratulations to the Ds because they have been doing brilliant work this season and they definitely deserve a lot of praise for what they've been doing. However, that is my tips. If we go back to my score, round 10, I got 7 out of 9, which isn't terrible. I managed to predict the uh, GWS West Coast game, which I was very, very happy about watching this. Um, some of them were really close. Like this one, I did not expect to be so close. Uh, I tipped Melbourne just because I didn't expect Adelaide to do what they did. However, I'm not betting against them this time. I think they may be able to do it against Richmond. And the Sydney loss to Fremantle was very tough as well. I was perfect all the way up until this absolutely shocking upset. If I had managed to tip this right and lose this by two points, 
would have been pretty upset. But uh, I'm not too mad at it either way. Uh, tips are just for fun, nothing too crazy, but a lot of exciting things to come in the upcoming round. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you guys are just excited as I, just as excited as I am for the upcoming round. Uh, hopefully, some really really big games coming through. Uh, yeah, but make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed what you have seen today, and I will see you all in the next uh, what round <laughs> review or round overview. We'll see what happens, but uh, hopefully I'll see you guys then. See ya!